You're listening to the Angry Marks Podcast Network. You're listening to the Wrestling Nerdcast on the Angry Marks Podcast Network. With your hosts, the bearded wonder Zane Paisley and the morning star Will Huckabee. All right, once again, ladies and gentlemen, it's that time of the week. It's time for the Wrestling Nerdcast. I'm your host, the incredible Huck, the morning star, the IWA North Carolina champion, and the worldwide Grand Prix champion, the indie darling killer, the southern gentleman, the disrespectful intellectual, Will Huckabee. And as usual, I know you got used to hearing the voices and stuff. My co-host, uh, I guess you could say my work wife, whatever, you know, my podcasting work wife, you know. Uh, the lover of waffles, the voice of the speech impediment. She's one half of the world's cutest commentary tag team. Uh, and you can also find her, you know, on a couple of other podcasts. But, you know, this is where she really, this is where she got all of her fame now. We're just going to tell everybody, hey, this podcast made her famous. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, say hello to my co-host, Mika Villas. Mika, what's going on? I am so over you right now. Podcast may be okay, you know. I'm having a great night. You know, it's a good week. Uh, I have some great wrestling happening. So, you know, I'm not going to complain for my infamousness or for anything that you have to say that you'll hold against me later, you know. (laughs) Well, look, I, I have nothing to complain about. Well, I do have a couple things to complain about this weekend. I'm Right now, I'm complaining about this temperature drop. Like, um, for once, it is now starting to feel like, you know, uh, October. It was a very cold and windy 51 degrees. Um, I was not ready for that. I, I was totally not ready for it to be 51 degrees at 7 o'clock in the morning. I was freaking out. Uh but what, what about you? How was your weekend this weekend? Because I saw some things online about where you went. We had a couple of conversations, and you kind of hurt my feelings, which we're going to get into that. But how was your weekend? Oh, you can't say that I hurt your feelings and not get into it. That's that, that's kind of rude and, and, and disrespectful to our, our, our viewers, our listeners. They want to know how exactly that they can go about hurting your feelings in the future. Um, no, my weekend was good. I... Uh, I partook of a little wrestling. I did a little wrestling road trip uh, to see a couple of people that I know on some shows. I went to Bible Viral Pro Wrestling in Thompson, Georgia, and caught their show, their fall brawl, which was a pretty good show. I is a hike from my my house to get there and it was really a last minute trip i you know i finally had a weekend off that i was not doing commentary i am of course part of wrestling's cutest commentary team along with my uh my partner danny danger and i finally you know had a weekend to myself and like most girls you know we like to do girly things like you know lay in a bed and sleep all day but that would not do on a wrestling weekend so i got up made that drive out there to Viral Pro, and I'm so very happy that I did. I must say again that in this area, there is always great wrestling happening in and around Georgia. So there is really no excuse for anybody who claims and says that, oh, I'm a fan of wrestling, not to get out to go see independent wrestling because these shows, no matter where you are, have great talent on them. You were on a great show as well here, and I know that's, you know, come see you. But I got to see uh, Chip Day in a tournament along with um, a, a friend to the show here, a gentleman we just did an interview with not too long ago, Darius Lockhart. Those two gentlemen, um, they had a match that was, I taped it, and I'm happy that I did because I've watched it myself at least four times it was an excellent match Darius Lockhart Chip Day 
go to my social media guys turn this match on watch it love it because it is truly a masterpiece it is truly what wrestling is all about these guys put on a show a clinic and i want to see them again i will pay money i will give up firstborn children i will name some child i don't know something ridiculous just to see these two go at it again so um it was great a great time in there you had the champ of viral pro somebody you're familiar with chris main he was the special guest referee in that match saw some pwx people there elijah evans the fourth was there montana black was there um tj boss so a lot of people who are known and just making bigger names for themselves out on the independent scene and i was you know it was a hike like i said in in the middle of nowhere but it was such great wrestling i would do that drive again as a matter of fact they have a december show coming up i may just go ahead and have to do that drive again to see if uh chris main can hold on to the title versus ship day well you know what yeah go ahead you know you might i don't know if you're gonna make the december viral pro show uh, just because I'm going to be a part of that show. And as evidenced by this weekend, if I'm anywhere close to your house and this is AWE, you're not coming. Ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you something. I talked to my esteemed colleague earlier last week. I was like, hey, Mika, I'm going to be in Georgia. I'm going to be in Columbus, Georgia. It's like an hour. What was it? An hour, hour and a half away from Atlanta. So you should come check it out. Oh, I don't know. I'm gonna be tired. It's my day off, but I, I I'm gonna have to find somebody to ride with me because I don't like riding that far by myself. I'll see, Will. Just hit me up. I'll see. And then I messaged her again, ladies and gentlemen, and I was like, "Hey, are you coming? No, I think I'm just gonna hang around, just not really do anything, uh, et cetera, et cetera." And then I go on social media, and I'm like, "Oh." She drove like two hours the opposite way to watch wrestling and couldn't come and support her co-host. Hurt my feelings to death. But oh, yes, gosh. It, oh, I'm gonna talk. Oh, I'm gonna talk about it for a while. Just let that be known. Uh, but in case you were wondering, <laughs> Mika, which I, if you was really if you was really that interested, you that came to the show. Um, I did have. I had a really great. Uh, Really great match. Actually, I had two great matches, but Saturday night was really good. Uh, Syndicate Pro Wrestling, SPW, uh, used to be National Syndicate Wrestling, uh, in Columbus, Georgia. I had a really, really great match. Wrestled a, a well-known, long-time Georgia indie wrestling guy, Payne. Uh, had a, I guess you could say a very Southern style, big man match. Uh, actually did, you know, the Kenny Omega spot with the corner moonsault, the Finley roll into the corner moonsault. Which is really becoming one of my favorite moves to do now as a big guy. The, the Finley roll, uh, into the, the moon salt from the second rope in the corner. So, uh, uh, lost that match. Um, thanks to interference by, by Payne's wife and stuff. She kind of gave me a low blow, like while we're fighting on the outside. The referee didn't see it. So, uh, that match was cool. Had a lot of great talent. Damian Wayne, Cahagas, uh, some guys from Georgia came in. Uh, Hall of Fame referee, uh, James Beard actually refereed the main event, um, between CJ Andrews and, uh, Damian Wayne. Uh, Tyson Dean was in the building from, uh, the Good Brothers Dojo. Uh, Scotty Beach was there representing the Good Brothers Dojo. Um, I'm trying to think who else was there. Uh, it was, it was a couple of guys from Texas. Um, Anthony Anderson, who, who was, uh, who wrestles with, or wrestles for Booker T at Reality of Wrestling down in Georgia. Um, just a, a really great crowd. Stud Marshall, uh, a really good buddy of mine, Cameron Cade was in the building. Uh, ha- it was great having some laughs with that guy. Like, I don't know, have you ever met Cameron Cade? I have not met Cameron Cade. Um, I'm not sure the last time he was through Atlanta. So I am familiar with the name, but I've- have the pleasure of meeting. Well, he was there, and as usual, you know, talking junk back and forth because me and Cameron K, we have some history dating all the way to the the pre PWX days when when PWX was the sister promotion for Evo Pro Wrestling in North Carolina. 
uh, met him a long, long time ago. We have history and stuff. We always have this, this long running joke and stuff. Every time I see him, I'm gonna give him another power bomb. Um, but that was a really good, really good show. And then, uh, Sunday was in Greensboro, North Carolina for Firestar Pro Wrestling presents their Zone One taping, their season two, uh, episode one of, uh, of Zone One Pro Wrestling. Um, had a triple threat match against Griff Garrison and Mickey Phelps for the number one contendership for the Zone One Platinum Championship. Uh, there was some, I, I lost the under less than favorable conditions. I actually took a curb stomp. Uh, from Griff Garrison onto a suitcase, which which really hurt. Uh, somewhere along the match, I took this really it was a really bad, brutal spot. Uh, Mickey Phelps gave me a senton to the back after hitting uh, Griff Garrison with the the spawn, my pop up spawn buster, uh, and I've broken and or cracked uh, three, well actually four ribs. So I'm in a lot of pain right now. Uh, it seems I'm talking really fast, which. I guess that's the reason why I'm talking really fast. Cause I'm taking very short breaths. Uh, and when you add on, like, you know, bruised, cracked, fractured, rib, broken ribs, along with, you know, it's like 40 degrees here and it's cold or whatever. Uh, and I just got back from my daughter's football game. It makes for a lot of pain. Oh, my gosh. I mean, and you wanted me to see you in that kind of pain? That that's not cool, man. I mean, you're you're a broken and battered man, and and as much as I like to beat on you, I don't know if I could, you know, function in that condition to see you so um, beat the hell up, man. Well, you would have seen that Saturday. That happened Sunday. Um, Listen, that's my excuse. It sounded good, you know. Uh, again. I I know. Last time you and I were in a, a show together, it, it wasn't the best of times. I mean, I, I interviewed you, and I I kind of fear for my life, so I might be a little scarred from that. So when I see you at Viral Pro, I'll try to be on my P's and Q's because you know I don't want you getting all you know in my general direction because I'm just a mild mannered girl who talks a lot, you know. And you you you're a little crazy. There's nothing. First of all, crazy is, is is that's mean. You should never call you by crazy. That's I apologize. That's it's, it's dismissive. You're a little in, insane. In, uh, chemically imbalanced. That time. Oh my gosh! But you know, all wrestlers are chemically imbalanced because we let people beat us up um, <laughs> and, and hit us with things, so it throws us around. So we're all chemically imbalanced uh, to one degree or another. It's it's whatever. Um, Breaking news that I just heard. I, I just seen this on social media. I want to talk about it a little bit. Uh, in light of Neville, the whole situation with Neville um, at WWE, whether he he walked out or he quit or he was released or he's not released, he's on strike, he's not on strike, he's taking a break, he's not taking a break, whatever the case may be. But in light of the situation with Neville, just heard that uh, Nia Jax uh, maybe – is taking a break, may have walked out, may have quit, may not have quit, may not have walked out, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, did you, did you happen to check that out? Like within the last couple of hours? I, I have not checked that out. I am getting the same reports and seeing on social media that you have. I haven't really dug into it. Not that I'm, you know, super reporter girl on the scene and have scoops and inside people, but I talk to a lot of people who know people who know people who know people. Um, and it's not unusual in this day and age. And I mean, in this day and age being the post Cody WWE, where people are feeling that their talents are not being utilized to the fullest and that they should kind of step back and reevaluate what they want as far as their career and or legacy is concerned and how it coincides with or does not coincide with what WWE sees for them. I would be if the Nia Jax uh, rumor is true, being that she is so new to the business, being that she has a family lineage and almost hard to say, but a duty to her family not to shame them by doing something that nobody else in her family has done. Nobody has walked away from the WWE and that family in such a way. So hers might be something more 
personal that might be happening on the background that it just happens to coincide with this Neville thing where the the understanding or the rumors that Neville asked for his release due to the fact that he was not happy with the direction that the WWE was taking his his character in and how they used him up to this point. He has well, I mean, a, according to, uh, according to uh, you know, sources, and we'll say pro wrestling sheet. According to pro wrestling sheet, it's being it's being noted or it's being said that WWE gave her a leave of absence for personal re- reasons. When originally it was reported that she walked out due to her frustration over uh, a backstage incident. Um, whether or not, whether no matter which one of them is true, uh, in my personal opinion. You know, that's, that's not a good look for WWE. And I don't want to talk too much about that because I want to talk about something else. But uh, I, I feel like it's really funny. Like, all of a sudden, everybody's like, you know what? Screw this. I, I'm taking my ball and I'm walking home. Uh, the second thing I wanted to talk about was kudos to uh, the what is the host of Thursday Night AMP. And I guess you, you might as well call the, the, the editor, the managing editor, and the only one that actually does some actual freaking work at Top Rope Press, uh, our, our own esteemed Abby A, um, for her article about, you know, um, I guess the, what's his name, Dave Palumbo had did an interview with uh, Matt Riviera. They were talking about drug use and the WWE role in the policy. And Dave Palumbo kind of let, I think he kind of let it slip that uh, in WWE, you know, you can take HGH and testosterone if it's under, you know, people are getting exemptions, I'm sorry, for taking HGH and testosterone. About 7% of the actual talent in the locker room is, is uh, has an exemption for taking legalized steroids, or basically for taking steroids, HGH and testosterone being the two that he mentioned. Um, real quick, I want your thoughts on that. Uh, should there be exemption? for people, uh, for talent, taking an ACH and testosterone. And this is not including um, part-timers. This is not including part-timers whatsoever. Should there be an exemption? This is not a, oh my gosh, this is going to get me in trouble. This is not a real sport. Your outcomes are determined. So you are an athlete to an effect, but you need to keep yourself in that kind of athletic shape to be in that kind of, um, to be that, to have that ability to keep that kind of shape and keep your body going after taking these bumps, these hits, these bruises night after night. So I, it doesn't surprise me that some of the people have exemptions. There's an adage that I say all the time. You take care of the people who take care of you. If your best worker is late to work, maybe five, 10 minutes here and there, you're not going to write them up and fire them because they're your best worker. If your best worker needs a little performance enhancing something, throw the wellness policy at them because in this case, this person or persons can be making you millions, if not hundreds of millions in dollars in revenue from sales, from t-shirts, from main eventing, from what have you. So you're going to take care of that person and, you know, look the other way. It has well been rumored and said that, of course, Triple H, with his physique, even though the man works out like crazy or whatever, that Triple H has been on some form of steroid. Um, CM Punk accused him um, way back in the day. Thing. So, again, in this era, why not? Why punish people for doing something that's going to eventually help in your bottom line and your revenue and it's not hurting anyone. It doesn't take away from the sporting chance of anything because again, we know what's going to happen. So it's not a big, big deal as long as nobody's getting hurt. That's, that's the key. As long as it's a healthy thing, nobody's going to the table, buying drugs from, you know, some back alley someplace. If it's doctor prescribed or at least monitored by all means, go right ahead and, you know, get the needle, get the whatever, and do what you need to do. That's my spin on it, if that's what they do. Well, well, speaking of big deal, uh, tonight's guest is a huge deal. Somebody that me and, yo, me and you both have been waiting 
with bated breath for this interview. Uh, so with that being said, our guest producer tonight, once again, the great and almighty Stevie J, please call tonight's guest. Ladies and gentlemen, speaking about big deals, speaking about athletes, speaking about making tons and tons of merchandise, speaking about main events, speaking about people that take care of you. Tonight's guest is the epitome of beauty and brains and brawn and kicking somebody's ass. And she's a pretty <laughs> awesome. And, and, you know, from what I've heard, you know, she can get down in the kitchen as well. Uh, <laughs> tonight's guest is, is just a, an all-around athlete, multi-sport athlete, but right now, now you can catch her kicking ass in the ring uh, at AWE and a bunch of other companies, not only in Georgia, but in, in Florida and Texas and Louisiana and North Carolina. Ladies and gentlemen, my opinion, the female Ray Lewis of professional wrestling, <laughs> Camilla Kane. <laughs> hello, hello. How you, doing? How you doing tonight? I'm good. How about yourself? I'm super excited. I I don't know if you can tell from social media, but me and Mika were both excited uh, when you agreed to be a guest in this show. Am I lying? Am I lying, Mika? You are telling the absolute God's honest truth. Like, seriously, so <laughs> so excited. I, I went to the kitchen. I broke out the pots and pans, and I was like, oh, wait, you know, we're, we're, we're not really going to be cooking. Can we just eat in, in the middle of the interview? I was... I was a happy girl. He told me yes, so I'm going to be eating in the middle of this. Don't even pay attention to the crunching of chips, okay? <laughs> I'm about to say, I better hear some crunching going on so I know it's girl, true. Girl, don't play because I got a bag of chips right here. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, well, well, first of all, uh, before we get into wrestling, like you are, I, I've seen some stuff and did my research, and you are an accomplished softball player. Uh, and not only that, yes. but you are also a, a straight A, like straight A student. Is that correct? How do you know that? Because I'm a journalist. This is what I do. I do my <laughs> you research. Are. You, you found out you're back. <laughs> I think they call that stalking in some states, but okay, whatever. Hey, I, I, pull, I pull a Cam Newton, like, like I, I'm, not, I'm not used to hearing guys talk about grades. You know what I'm saying? I'm just shocked. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, but uh, but yeah. So, so you know, before professional wrestling, before football, you were an accomplished softball player. Um, why did why why what happened? Why leave softball? Um, honestly, I started getting very serious about softball only until my junior year of high school, which which is uh, pretty crazy for people that, I mean, most people that go to college, especially Division I um, university, to play, you know, any sport, especially softball, have been playing travel ball since they were about eight and under. Um, then I realized that the only way pretty much to get a, you know, a good scholarship somewhere was to play travel ball, especially in Durham, North Carolina. It's not necessarily a hot spot for softball. So I started playing travel ball. I signed that junior summer going into senior year. And uh, the reason I didn't, like, pursue it after is, number one, pretty much with any professional women's sport, which kind of sucks, it's really hard to make a living off of doing that. And number two, I just wasn't that passionate about it. I kind of lost my love for the game uh, a little bit in college, to be honest with you. So, yeah, that wasn't something I wanted to continue doing after college, which is funny now. Because now I'm playing slow pitch on Sundays and I'm having the time of my life, so picked it back up a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> now, like I said, like softball, football. I'm gonna tell you right now. Um, me and my daughter, you know, you you play for the what is it? Hold, let me correct it. The Atlanta Steam, correct? Yes. Yes. All right. So me and my me and my 11 year old, who uh, is also a defensive football player, she plays defense for a pop Warner team, mm -hmm. was watching a couple of games on YouTube and stuff, man. Because I was like, once again, I'm a journalist. I gotta look my stuff up. Mm -hmm. And I was like, hey, Ari, right, I know that one. I know that number right there. Like, yo, that's my homegirl. She's gonna be on the show. Um, <laughs> and of course, my daughter's like, oh, la la la. But uh, getting to the football, what was one of the biggest misconceptions that you? you had uh, 
when you first started playing, I guess you could say professional women's football, was one of the biggest, biggest misconceptions that you had that was completely blown out of the water? Uh, completely blown out of the water. Well, it was kind of two things. The biggest misconception was, I mean, I realized that it, like uh, watching the videos and stuff before I tried out that the girls were like, I'm only watching the language trash talkers and, and, you know, hitting hard hey, and stuff me, like that. Camilla, but I didn't really. Camilla, this, what is was a, that? Like, this is a, this is an R rated show. Like we've had Rip Rogers and White <laughs> Mike. And, and all of them on this show. So trust me, you can't out. I'm, if you if you can out curse Rip Rogers or White Mike, then damn it, you deserve the title. <laughs> uh, oh, there's a title for that. All right. Well, no, okay. Um, <laughs> but yeah. So I, I realized all that was happening, but I didn't really feel it, you know, until I started getting the into practices and realized, like, man, all these girls are a whole bunch of head cases, you know, in the best way possible. <laughs> like they. They want to hurt. I mean, you're. On, they want to hurt you. They want to kill you. And um, that, you know, that was. I thought everyone was kind of going out, you know, for the love of the game, having fun, trying something out new. But no, these these girls want to kill, kill each other. Um, so that was. I mean, that was kind of, I guess, the the biggest like shock, um, for me, and especially because I've always been the type of person where. I, you know, I take training and practices seriously, but I'm kind of lighthearted at the same time. Oh, no, 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 no. These practices, I mean, we practice every weekend in Atlanta, and the coaches, they didn't care that we were girls. None of that. Coach Dane Robinson, shout out to him. They, I mean, it's all a whole bunch of head cases. They're crazy. But, you know, you, you kind of got to be to play football or wrestle. So. Now, I'm a, I got one more question about, you know, football and stuff before I hand it over to my esteemed colleague and stuff. Um, in, in pro wrestling, I mean, in, in like the NFL and, the, you know, regular football, men's football or whatever, you know, they're covered. They're basically covered the head to toe. They, you know, pads all over the place, mm-hmm. helmets, cleats or whatever. Uh, and with the LFL, the, for lack of a better term, there's a lot more skin shown. Um, oh, Yeah. Did did you have a problem with that? Because I know in professional wrestling, we say, hey, sex sells. Go out there and be sexy. Mm-hmm. Whether you're a man or a woman, sex sells. Uh, as a football player, and this is something, of course, as a, a regular athlete, I guess you could say, uh, you know, one to be taken serious and stuff. Did you have a problem with the uniform, or were you just like, I don't give a shit as long as I get to hit somebody? Um, yeah, so honestly, me and I'm sure, I mean, pretty much all the other girls can attest to this, and they'll tell you that you put in so much work during practice and, you know, studying film, all that stuff, that when game day comes, like, you're only worried about playing the game. Like, the uniform, you put it on, and you you don't think anything of it. Like, I'm, I'm sure you watch some of the, the film. I mean, some, some nipples might come out, some things down below might come out, and, like, you just fix it and keep it moving. Like, like... And a lot of people that come to the game, they'll tell us at the meeting greets afterward, which is, I think I think it was the coolest part. A lot of them they say, you know, we hey we came for the uniforms, like we came for sexy girls, and they'll say, but you know what, we left respecting y'all's game, like y'all can play some football, and we stopped noticing the uniforms. Like you know, my my parents, my little nephew that I love, and they all come, you know, come to the game and they enjoy the game. So same thing when we're playing, and it's really just. You don't even think about it, but you think about it kind of when you get turf burn. That don't play. That really, that, that well, was so good. I'll tell you what, like, <laughs> F, F, I will tell you, like, watching the game and stuff, man, watching y'all play, I was just like, and I watched the game y'all played against Chicago, which I'm guessing is, like, your division rival and stuff and one of the most hated teams in the league. Yeah. Uh, I, look, I was scared to death. I was just like, there's no, like, yo, the tra- the amount of trash talking and the viciousness. Mm-hmm of a lot of the tackles and the hits. I was just like, oh, God, like, do they, like, oh, and, and I felt like the dad, because, you know, I have I have daughters and stuff, and the dad and me came out like, oh, my yeah. God, like, these girls, like, and they're so pretty, like, why would they do this to each other? Like, oh, God, like, why, why? Like, they're, <laughs> it's so vicious. It's so, like, as a, as a fan of just combat sports, like, I feel like, uh, it's a, it'll be a lot easier, just like indie wrestling versus prof- versus WWE. I feel like if I came to an a LFL game, I would enjoy the experience of being in that game a lot more than going to an NFL game just because the yeah. action is so close to the fans. Am I correct? Mm-hmm. Uh, definitely, for sure. And the fact that, you know, these LFL games, you only have 
two home games per season. So, like, you know, every single game at home is an event, a big event. That definitely makes it even, like, extra special. Well, I know that I've read my mouth enough. Uh, and, unfortunately, we've got to let somebody else get into the conversation. So, ladies and gentlemen, Camilla, <laughs> I'm going to turn it over to my co-host, Mika. Mika, if you could stop munching on the chips long enough to answer a question, we would appreciate it. All right, all right, all right. I, I, I put the chips down, you know, washed down some soda, so now I'm hyper and sugared up. So here's my deal. <laughs> Unlike Will, who stalked you and watched games and everything, I watched your your beautiful, just wonderful show that you're doing now that is just inspiring a lot of people. Kitchen Killer with Camilla. Yeah. That right there. Yeah. With Camilla. With Camilla. <laughs> We're going to eat, eat, eat. <laughs> like... That's like, my favorite thing that's happened with all of this when people start singing that. Like, that's my favorite. <laughs> like, that is the most catchiest thing whenever I hear your name now. Seriously, that pops into my head. Like, I, I've been to shows where you've been on, and your theme song is like this this awesome remix. It kicks in or whatever, but it doesn't. I hear Kitchen Killer. <laughs> this is like, here you go. I know, I know, I know. Looking all badass, and I'm just like, da da da. All right. Show. You you go around and you interview people. You do interviews with people and you eat. Yes. <laughs> My favorite if, thing, talking and eating. Talking and eating. If you could talk <laughs> to anybody at any time, period, whenever, and eat something, your most favorite is food. Who would the person be? Oh, Lord. And what would you be eating? And if you can't think of a person that's mm. fun. Just tell me we'll what is it that shut up we'll hug. Hug. no no nobody nobody cares nobody wants to talk to you are you still here I thought mm -hmm. I muted you no uh, uh, <laughs> but like seriously if you can't think of a person just food what is that that food that you go that is my food of everything you could eat it forever and ever and dare somebody to try to take mm -hmm. a piece from you forever and ever well. A person I know that I've always kind of wanted to pick their brain and like even before I got into wrestling it's probably I just kind of you know generic but just the rock because I I really just I, the question I want to ask him is like do you sleep you know like, uh -uh. I don't think he does there's no possible way like I, I just want to pick his brain because it blows my mind all the things he has his hands in I, I just think it's just like insane um and the food I'd have to go, like, I love starches and carbs, so we got to bring out some bread in the beginning, um, and I want some butter and oil to go with it, because, you know, I, I want to have some with butter, some with oil. Um, then we got to bring out some mashed potatoes and baked macaroni and cheese, and, I, oh, I got to be a little healthy, so we'll bring out some grilled asparagus as well, but, like, lots of butter sauce and stuff on it. I like that. <laughs> that, and... that threw off the healthiness, that butter sauce, but I'm good with that. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm going to tell you, you can't have, like, actual healthy vegetables. You got to have them in, like, in a casserole or something. You know what I mean? Oh, okay. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> and then, I, you know what I want to have, like, is my mom, I just, my mom's meatloaf. That was weird, but I really love my mom's meatloaf. So that there it is right there. That just made me super hungry, and I'm eating, and I'm hungry. That, okay, that's cool. Mom's meatloaf, that's that's number one. The Rock, I, I would have asked him, like, can I touch you? But that would have been inappropriate. So I'm good. I'm good with that, too. You know, about the not sleeping, you know. I, it, was, it was just yeah. the tattoo. That's what I meant. Let me clean that up, the tattoo. I just want to. Trace yeah, the tattoo. Yeah, you just want to check out the tattoo. That's it. I feel you. It, it looks like you know you can connect the dots or lines or something. That's all. You know, I'm sorry about his wife. Yeah, yeah. You know, touch him. Okay. So, with you getting into wrestling from football, where do you think that you've done your hardest hitting? Was it on the field or was it in the ring? Because when you spear somebody, like legitimately. I'm going, holy crap, she just killed this damn girl. <laughs> because um, you, you move quick and you've got that, that 
I, I guess for lack of a better word, you do have that that uh, that quickness that you would see on a football field, that explosiveness that you would see out of a player, and you go, holy hell, didn't think they can move that fast, and you just lower the boom on these damn girls, and I'm just like, I'm so glad it's not me. <laughs> Yeah, um, the, I think the hardest, the hardest hitting, I mean, it would have to be on the football field and, and in the practice and stuff, because like I said, the, I mean, God, they were, everyone's trying to kill each other, so that would, I, I, I hurt myself like the first week, of, weekend of practice, so I remember that, um, but as far as like, like difficulty and stuff goes like that, and and being more dangerous, all in all, would actually have to go to wrestling, you know, because a lot of the stuff you do, like, you, you're having to, to trust the other person, and you're pretty, I mean, every time you step up in the wrestling ring, you're, you're putting your life in someone else's hands, and that's kind of a, like, at least in football, you know, like, you're in control of, of most things, you know, and wrestling, it's a, it's a two-way dance, so it's just different, I guess. It's it, it's different, and, again, you, you... You do trust, I believe, that, you know, the other girl, she's trying to try to kill you, but at least, you know, she's trying to kill you for, you know, the football or something or to get to your quarterback or whatever. But, yeah, and wrestling, totally different kind of death-defying feats you girls are doing there. Uh, speaking of exactly. death-defying feats and, and wrestling, you've got some great matches so far under your belt. You, you've been, um, of course, here called the Ray Lewis of wrestling, of, of female wrestling. Um, I've heard you <laughs> called the, the female Goldberg. What yeah. do you want people to, when they think of you, as you, as you're starting out here, you're getting these, these compare. I think like, you know, it's just like people go, ha ha Goldberg. And they see you go, well, hell yeah, I could see that. You know, she's dominant as hell. Mm -hmm. What do you want? your legacy to be what do you want to keep that going to um i mean the thing that i've been and i want people to know me as not only like i can get in there and squash a girl and be super dominant but also know me as you know an athlete that can move around and, and have a really like good toe-to-toe -to -toe match with somebody else like if they do come in and, and they're my size like i want to like not just a big brick house that can't really move well. Like I want to be able, I want people to realize that, you know, I am an athlete and I can do more than just, just throw people down, you know? Um, and, and also someone that has a bit of a personality because I feel like that's the big thing that like monkeys can do moves. I, I, a lot of people don't have our personality. And so honestly, that's the thing I want to be most known for. Cause I think, that that goes down in history more than anything else. Speaking of personalities, and I'm not even going to say it. Speaking of personalities and monkeys, I had to. I'm sure Mr. Huckabee <laughs> has some more that he wants to ask you because, again, so excited. And, you know, he he's done his homework, and I don't want to hog up all the time. So, Huck, <laughs> Huck, I know. Go ahead. Ask Camilla something else, and I'm sorry I'm in trouble later. Trust me. <laughs> well, once again, ladies and gentlemen, this is the Wrestling Nerdcast on the Angry Mark Podcast. I'm your host, Will Huckabee. With me, Camilla, and tonight we're interviewing wrestling standout Camilla Kane. Uh, now, Camilla, you know, speaking of personality and stuff and, and having fun and, and having charisma and stuff, uh, we can tell from this interview and from the show, uh, your YouTube show, Kitchen Killer with Camilla, Ladies and gentlemen, check it out every week. Um, plug, plug, plug. We that, <laughs> plug, plug, plug. Uh, you know, so we can tell that you like to have fun. You know, when you're when you're outside mm -hmm. the ring. But you know, being in the locker room, being in the locker room with you several times, watching you on shows, uh, you have this intensity. Uh, you have this zone that that right before you get right before you know you go out the curtain, you get into this zone and stuff. Uh, I know that, you know, I have my own personal thing that I do before I get into a match. You know, I, people have seen me bang my head against a wall or a door a couple of times and stuff, uh, kind of to just get, get myself into this zone. But what what are your pre-match rituals, if you have any? So pretty much pre-match rituals, in my head, I try to go over the match 200 million times because I'm still, you know, the memory thing is still 
tough for me and still new. Um, so that's one. And then right before I go out, I just try to put myself, you know, like almost like I am about to go into a football game. Like I, I'm moving around a little bit and just in my head, like I'm going to go out there. And when I make eye contact with the person across the ring, like in my head, you know, like I want to kill him. Like, like I put myself in that same football mindset, as corny as it sounds. I really do. Like, we're, you know, we're not going out there as friends. We we can shake hands afterwards, but that that's kind of the mindset that I try to put myself in, just like I'm going out there on the field. So no superstitions, because I know a lot of athletes are superstitious, uh, especially in wrestling. Guys write certain things on their wrist tape. Some guys might have like a certain pair of socks they always wear. So you don't have like any like superstitions, like things that you gotta have before you go to the ring, like your favorite pair of socks, or you gotta have this type of gum, or or anything like that. <laughs> No, oh, I'm real. I, I don't. I, I try not to believe in superstitions because I am. You know, used to play softball, and I had way more superstitions <laughs> when it came to uh, softball. So this, I, I try to keep it. You know, I, I don't even have matching knee pads. One knee pad is like a medium. One knee pad is a large. I'm pretty, I'm pretty low key when it comes to that. <laughs> Now, uh, I get the way, you know, like, I want to know about you, because as Tamika might have let everybody know, uh, I, I may or may not have done a lot of extensive homework on you and stuff in this interview. Um, <laughs> but I really want we want to get to know the real Camilla. So, like, I know I've been told that I have, like, probably the worst taste in music, uh, especially when it comes to being in the road trip. Like, I'm a fan of, like, disco, like, 70s disco and, like, Hanson. <laughs> And like you know, talk Hanson. radio. And stuff. <laughs> Man, I'm, I'm a you know. Next time you talk to Martin Stone, ask him about my love of the song Mbop. Like I have to listen to it every week. Mm Mbop, okay. Like, so, <laughs> like I have, like that's my thing. I have to listen to Hanson. It's on my phone. It's downloaded on my phone. Like that's my joint. Um, but if we're in the car with Camilla going to a show anymore, I'm not taking you serious at all anymore. <laughs> knowing that you listen to Mbop before your match. <laughs> That, first of all, that that song went platinum. First of all, okay, song went platinum. It's a hit <laughs> song, all right, um, and it's catchy. Uh, but if we're in the car with Camilla, we're going, we're on the road trip, heading to a show. Like, what would you be listening to? Like, I know you're from North Carolina. I'm from Carolina, so I know there had to be like, you know, some J Cole, maybe some Petey Pablo if you like older, a little bit older hip hop. You know what I'm saying? Like, what do you like to listen to when you're on the road? That's funny. You may, I'm going to tell a little side story real quick just because you mentioned Petey Pablo, okay? Um, my first job after I graduated college was in Sacramento, California, working for the Kings doing sales, okay? And in that little sales room, everyone's at their own little cubicle and whatnot, but there was TVs up, and what was going on the TVs were when people would make sales or do anything like that, you, you, you had like a little your own personal song that played, right? And so everyone there was super formal and professional. And I was probably the most unprofessional person there, you know, because I was a kid right out of college. And so my song, whenever I made a sale or anything like that, was Petey Pablo, like North Carolina. But, and everyone just rolled their eyes whenever it played in the office. <laughs> yeah, that job didn't last too long for me. So there's that. But uh, um, on the honestly, like you can ask anybody that drives with me. I really listen to a little bit of everything except for probably like screamo rock I, I mean i have some like reggaeton on my playlist i got rap rock hip-hop country pop um so it usually just is on like a shuffle um sometimes i'm in a certain mood where like i only feel like listening to country for a while but just kind of it's really a lot of everything all right so if we go to your so we go to your playlist right now What's what, just give us mm -hmm. the top three songs that's probably on your playlist right now? Okay, like Jay Balvin, me Gente or Hente. I don't even know how to pronounce it. You know, sorry about it, but I don't. But I like that song right right now. Uh, oh, Ed Sheeran. I love, 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 love Ed Sheeran. I would marry that man in a heartbeat. I don't care. He can sing to me every night. That's fine. Um, I, I do, I love ba like the ballads and, and I like people that can sing, you know, I, I like being able to sing along in the car and uh, third, I don't know, man. I don't know. 
I'm so I'm surprised like you know, I'm surprised like no no take no, like I'm really feeling that. Uh, no, 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 no. I am not what? on the no train. That girl is annoying. Oh, that new song is so hot though. Which one was the um? Look what you made me do. That one. Yeah. Yes. That's annoying. She's so annoying. She's she always got <laughs> she always got a problem with some man. I'm like, you need to quit, Taylor. You know, you need to get your, you need to get your stuff together. How do I do that? I like the new. I call, I call it. Tay Tay, like how do you not like the new Tay Tay song? Like, oh man, I'm so surprised. Well, you know, I'm so well. Look, like I'm I'm surprised that you said that you like to sing along in the car because, as a fan of Kitchen Killer with Camilla, um, there may have been an episode when you was with hanging out with a high school friend of yours where you let it slip yes. that you are a freestyle. That you like to freestyle rap. That no, you got man, bars, I was back in the day. Way back uh, in the day. I, but hold on now, because I, I just seen your, I just seen this past interview, this past episode, <laughs> Kids and Killer with Camilla, where you had a beignet, which that's how it's pronounced for the record, it's beignet. <laughs> well, you might have dropped a couple of bars real quick, buddy. So could, would it be possible for us over here, the Wrestling Nerdcast, for you to bless us with like a, a quick four, four bars real quick? Oh, my God. <laughs> okay. You got you to gotta give me, like, a topic or something. Uh, Mika, give her a topic real quick. Let's, let's give her a topic real quick. Uh, how annoying Taylor Swift is. There you go. Oh, my God. <laughs> T-Swizzle is not doing your theme song anytime soon. Hit her off and make sure she's singing a song about I got you. I got, I got one. Let's go, let's go with the fact because one of my favorite, one of my favorite moments in any wrestling show is when Kiara Hogan gets beat up. So how about give us a quick four bars about how bad you beat up Kiara Hogan? What? Jesus. <laughs> all right, all right, what? all right. Ready? Ready? We're ready. All right. <clears throat> all right. Girl on fire, you're about to admire what I do in the ring. Ting, ting, ping, ping. Off the rope I go. Hippity dippity do. Hit you in the face. Make you replace in the ring. We gonna put it down. Ting, ting, ting. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. Oh, it made up work. <laughs> It was, it was, trust me, it was way better than anything that Mika could have done. Like, she, I, even though I, she's from, like, Chicago, she has no hip-hop skills whatsoever. Mika eating chips, putting in some dip, a variety, so she can talk to me about food. I don't know. <laughs> well, okay, uh, before I pass it back to, to Mika one more time, uh, we've seen you in so many great matches. Kiara Hogan, Priscilla Kelly. Uh, this match you just had with Alan Dawn was amazing. Um, yeah. Who are some of the ladies out there on the, who are out there right now that, that you admire that you really would love to get in the ring with and stuff? Um, one is actually going to happen this Saturday at PWX, and that's um, Lacey Lane. And, and, you know, that's just because we um, we kind of started training together a little bit, and, and we've always been friends, and I – she has such a different style to me, like completely different. Um, so, you know, that's someone that I respect and that I'm looking forward to having that match with. It's going to be a little bit faster paced than I'm used to. So it's going to be a challenge uh, that I'm just really excited about. Uh, let me think. Mm, I mean, I've seen this one girl, actually. I don't, I've never even I've never even met her or anything like that, but I've seen her on like Twitter and stuff like that. Her name is like Maria Manic, I believe, and she does like a lot of oh, stuff. And, yes, yeah, out of Kentucky. Um, and someone, yeah, but well, so because someone tagged me one time, like I love to see that match, and I didn't really know who it was, and I clicked, and I was like, yeah, like I think that'd be a pretty cool um, match because she she looks like you know she's built and, and does a lot. Of, so I just thought that'd be you know maybe a cool match. Like I said, I don't you know even know the girl, but I, I want. I like I like to mix it up. Like I said, like Lacey's gonna be someone completely like so small and the lucha stuff, and 
I just want to be because I keep learning every time I'm in there, like new stuff. I'm still I'm still new. So I, I just want to always be challenged. And oh, I got to say, I got to say, I got to say, I still need this match to happen with White Mike. Like that. I'm still waiting for what? to be brave enough to book it. What? What? Hold on. Nisha, hold on. We got to hear about this. Uh, there's a match that needs to happen between you and White Mike. What is this about? Yeah. That uh, a long time ago, you know, he said that like, you know, I was I was the only snow bunny he was ever in love with and I said that, you know, if he wanted to be with me he'd have to fight <laughs> he'd have to fight for my love. So uh, the only way I think to fight for the love is in the ring, you know what I mean? Everybody silence for that one because White Mike will die that day. We all know it. He'll die that day. He'll die for love. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh my gosh. I'm only <laughs> laughing because like I was in the car with, with I was in the car with the gymnasty boys, uh, because we was like, Hey, let's go down to Atlanta to watch the Roar show. And mm-hmm. your name was brought up and, and White Mike said that. He he actually said that while all riding in, in my car. It was like, That's like the only white girl I ever think about hooking up with. And he's like, she said, we got to fight. And I'm like, Mike, she's going to kill you, bro. Like, yo, we cool. Like, she's going to actually, like, for real, kill you. Like, th- like, that's not even, like, being, a, that's not even being funny. Like, I understand. Like, wrestling's predetermined. Like, we work with each other. Like, she's still going to hurt you. Like, oh. <laughs> Mika, <laughs> Mika what, 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 before we let, you know, uh, Camilla go, like, what's one of your last questions you, you definitely want to ask her? Before we let Camilla go, they'll get ready to kill White Mike because, again, whoever is brave enough to book that match, that's a lot of money there. I mean, I'll put money down it toward is. his funeral expenses and for the booking of the match. I will do what I got to do to see that happen. I like White Mike, but if the girl's going to kill him, man, you know, he's going to go out with a smile. So, um, <laughs> when you're not, you know, plotting the demise of White Mike, Ball, I'll get back to so, slow pitch off ball. What do you do at home to uh, relax and unwind? Like, do you like break out something on TV? Is what's your like go to show or something that you can just sit back, watch, relax, laugh, or cry or yell or something that you like to watch? Your your TV pleasure. If somebody was like, "Ooh, Camilla watches this like me too," what's that show or shows? <laughs> oh man, well. I'm super poor, so I don't even have TV, but I have, uh, like, Hulu that I watch on my phone every now and then, uh, and it kind of depends what kind of mood I'm in, but, like, I like real silly stuff. I, I actually, well, I got hooked on this show uh, recently. It was called The Sinner. I don't know if you heard of it. It was Jessica Biel. I got, yes. I actually got, like, it's really hard for me to get into shows because I'm kind of ADHD. Like, I, I, I get bored real easy. Um, so I actually got into that show because it was a thriller and I was like, what's going to happen? But then on the softer side of things, like, I like watching South Park and stuff and, like, Family Guy because I'm, I'm stupid. So I enjoy that stuff. No, I, The Center is a good show and you, you cannot ever go wrong with South Park and Family Guy because you never know what's going to happen <laughs> on either one of those shows. I, I, <laughs> You know, I think at one point we all want to be Stewie just to, you know, kill Lois and get it over with. So that's cool. <laughs> right. So slow pitch softball, you, you, you've, you've come full circle now. And, you know, I am clearly a watcher and I've watched lots of slow pitch. Usually it's dudes and they cry a lot when they play, but, um, I do. Um, and that it's better, much, much better, especially on Sundays. Cause everybody's just like, Hey, we're here to have fun. Um, yeah, but, but it's still competitive. So now has there ever been a time where you like, man, I could take this bat or matter of fact, I could just beat somebody right now. Cause you know, somebody might've done a, wh- what position do you play in Get that out there? Cause if you're out in the field. Yeah, I play left field. I don't. I don't do the uh, infield. Never. I, the last time I did infield was in high school. Like I've always been an outfielder. I love. I, I made a play. I I threw someone out at home the other day, and like, because nothing like that's happened yet in, in slow pitch for us. And everyone just like turned their head and was amazed that I could do that. I was like, y'all don't know. Y'all don't <laughs> know about me. Y'all don't know who y'all dealing with over here. I feel yeah, like I feel exactly. like that's cheating. <laughs> I feel like that's 
cheating. Like what? she's a ringer on like I feel like that's cheating. You're like a, a ringer for like a Sunday like <laughs> a Sunday league is like, yeah, I can throw you off of that field. Now what? Uh, like that's <laughs> kind of cheating. No, it's not. Like I'm actually playing like a decently competitive co ed league. Like it's it's actually pretty competitive. So yeah, it, it's not. <laughs> we got other really good people like the shortstop is a guy and he's amazing, like amazing. It's not cheating. I mean, it's not like she's getting paid sponsorship deals for throwing people out from the field, from left field. I mean, if she is, we won't talk about it. <laughs> we're, we're not going to talk about it, you know. <laughs> we get 5% each, so shut up and let it go. No. All right, so. Yeah, let it go. Let it go. Let it go. So back to my favorite topic, if we haven't figured that out, is the whole food portion again. You being mm-hmm. it, it, you being from New York, because that's the New York accent I hear. You clearly, clearly. What? 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 North it Carolina. Was, what? North Carolina. What are you talking about? North New York. What? I, I knew that. Get... I knew that would pipe you up. Calm down. I hear the southernness. I'm from up north. Everybody sounds alike. You know. Okay. Sorry. Don't <laughs> kill me. Neither one of you. Don't kill me. But seriously, being a nice, a, a cool southern girl in this kitchen killer. Tell me you can cook. And what is your dish? What is the dish that you just go bam? You you know you don't mic drop it, but you like drop a fork like bam. That's it right there. The fork drop. The fork drop. The fork drop. Um. Well, now I used to cook a lot more in college when I was uh when I well first of all I was vegan for a little bit so I had to learn to cook then and then I was living with my you know boyfriend at the time then so I would always make food for us but now you know I'm just I, I kind of. I kind of just grab meals every now and then. Like, I don't cook a whole lot, but what I still cook really well is mashed potatoes. And then what I love to cook, which I haven't done in a long time, it was actually um, chicken cordon bleu, like with the ham and all that. Yeah. It was pretty good. All right. So let me see. So Sunday's a slow pitch and chicken cordon bleu and mashed potatoes. I'll bring the food. You just do the cooking, okay? Just let me know when you're ready, and All I'm right. coming over to eat, because that sounds amazing, boss. Um, <laughs> and no, Huckabee's not invited. You know, can't even eat the uh, chicken. He can, he, he can bring the okra. He can bring the fried okra. <laughs> He's not invited. First of, all, okay? <laughs> first of all, I can cook like there's no tomorrow, okay? All right? I mean, I, I, I've cooked my entire life, and I can, I can like, Classic, like Italian cooking. Thank you very much, Mika. Ooh. Whatever, boil water, add spaghetti sauce. Calm your nerves. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I can't, I can't fry chicken for some reason. Like my chicken always turns out like burnt on the outside, raw on the inside. But I can make Ooh. shrimp scampi. I can make shrimp scampi or like ravioli with like homemade ravioli and stuff. Okay. There's so many words I could use about you not frying chicken, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to let you wrap up with Camilla and, you know, because I got no words that are not, that are good. I'm sorry. Even I can, <laughs> even I can cook chicken. I'm just saying. I've, ne- I've never gotten the hang of cooking chicken. I just don't know why. Just, I, don't don't judge me. Anyway. I, I'm, I'm for rotten. Like, like, I'm a princess. The manual labor in the kitchen I can't, I can cook chicken. And if you can't cook chicken, I'm going to need your, um, urban car. <laughs> urban car. Did she just take, she just try to take my black card? What? Um, yeah, pretty much. Uh, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, Camilla, like, first of all, before we let you go, um, I, I'm going to ask, where did you come up with the name Kitchen Killer? And, was the song original? Did you come up with that song originally? Oh man, you know what? Like that song is it just describes me perfectly because what had happened was I was sitting there thinking one day I was like I need like an intro that I use for all of it, right? And so I just like I do all of it because I don't have a like I told you I'm a little popo, you know what I'm saying? So. I don't have a computer or anything. I do all of it from my phone. And and so I just use this iMovie program. And I started, like, like it does this countdown, like, recording in 3, 2, 1. And I had nothing planned at all. 
so like that kitchen killer theme song was literally like it said recording in three two one and i just started going and that's what you heard so <laughs> and i just went with it i was like whatever it's stupid i love it <laughs> that's what happened it is, it, i'm telling you right now that song is like one of the most catchiest things I've ever heard. Like, like I said, like me and <laughs> me, and Rico, we just sit here, me. just start singing. It's just like we just like spontaneously just start bursting out singing. Tisha Killa, Tisha Killa. Tisha Killa. I don't really know all the words. Like, oh, eat, 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 then eat some more. Like, <laughs> <laughs> eight, eight, eight. <laughs> is it available on part. iTunes? <laughs> we need to purchase it on. I iTunes. know. That, I need. Play. I need to make it a thing, right? Make yeah. money. Ninety nine cents. Exactly. Keep, keep. Nine nine cents. There you go. I definitely buy it. Uh, so before we let you go, let us know. Um, you know where are you going to be at in the upcoming future? Where are we going to see you at? Uh, wrestling, football, where the case may be at. Where can we see you at? What you got coming up? Uh, coming up this weekend, I'm going to be at USWA in Jacksonville on the twentieth. On the twenty first, uh, that match against Lacey Lane, um, PWX. That'll be my debut in North Carolina, actually. Uh, so, like, a lot of my friends and family should be there. I'm super excited about that one. Um, and then Atlanta AWE, they're having on that, uh, I believe it's a Monday, the 13th, uh, that free show they're doing. I mean, that's going to be crazy. I know Murder One is wrestling Asha Boo, so that'll be really good. And then I'm at WrestleCade um, that Thanksgiving weekend, uh, like November 24th, I think, through something. Um, so excited about that. That's definitely going to be a really cool chance to meet a lot of new people in the the wrestling world. So I'm super excited about that one. And then you, I'll be never been? in Texas. No, I've never been. Oh my god, yo, we're I'm I'm going to be there. I'm trying to get Mika to come up and stuff, so we can shoot like some live episodes of the Wrestling Nerd Cast. And if so, we have a crossover Wrestling Nerd Cast in the kitchen with Camilla. Oh hell yeah, yeah. For sure. Let's make it happen. Word, there we go. All right, so what we got? Texas coming up when? Oh, Texas is in December, and I used to live in Dallas for a little bit, so uh, the show is like around the Dallas area, so I'm super excited to, to get back to there. For uh, I'm actually doing two shows there that, that weekend, so that kind of is what I have to remember off the top of my head right now. Well, I mean, that's all over the place. I mean, that's a pretty good schedule, like Carolina, Florida, Georgia, Texas. Like, that's you know, you I've been, been, a lot been of trying to go time. a lot of different places. Yeah, I've been trying to go a lot of different places. You know, next thing you know, you're going to be seeing you in Japan and Mexico and England. I mean, you got to put the windshield miles in. So um, Definitely. I want to I want to get to the U.K. for sure. Why is that? Let, let's go ahead and ask, why is that? I, well, I have some family over there, actually, that I've never even got, like, a chance to, to go over there and meet. Um, my, my Nana is from, like, the Manchester area. Uh, she, she lives here now, but still, like, some of my family over there. And one of my best friends that I made in wrestling, because she came down and trained for, for, like, a month, she lives over there. So I would love to go and, like, stay with her and be able to wrestle around. I would love to wrestle um, Isla again over there, like, little suit over there this time. That'd be fun. So I think that'd be a good time. Yeah, yeah, take that. Y'all could take that feud international. That sounds like that sounds like a great idea. Um, so exactly. we've already plugged kitchen, we've already plugged the YouTube channel Kitchen Killer with Camilla. Um, we're gonna mm-hmm. plug it again. So let all of our fans and listeners know where they can keep up with Camilla Kane and stuff on all of your social media. Um, so on Instagram, it's just at Camilla Kane. Um. You know, K A M I L L A K A I N E with it. <laughs> um, oh, that's on Instagram, and then Twitter is the same thing at Camilla Kane. Um, my Facebook, I'm actually I made an athlete page that, but my name on it was my you know shoot name, and Facebook's not letting me change it, so I I, I don't want really people to follow me on on that one yet. Um, and then friend request on there is a little weird, but. So just just follow me on Instagram and, and uh, Twitter, but and YouTube. That's basically where it's at right now. There you go. Like, follow her on Instagram and Twitter, and then make sure you subscribe and hit the little bell on YouTube, man. It's gonna be awesome. Uh, anything else you want to plug before we let you go for tonight? I think that's good. I think we had a lot of things. 
Well, thank you. Well, I'm just glad, I'm just glad that you let the people know that I'm an intellectual as well. I'm very, I'm very happy about that. You know. That, well, that I mean, I wasn't even, gonna, I wasn't even going to let it be known. But since you went up, I wasn't even going to let it be known that at one point you were the student athlete of the week. <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I I can help you with a restraining order whenever you need one. Just let me know, okay? <laughs> no, mean, it's I'm, all good. I'm, it's all good. My my dad. I'm used to my dad will go like, like uh, people will come up to me and and tell me facts that like I forgot about myself, and I'm like, how do you know this? And it's because my dad goes around bragging about me all the time. So it's like I'm kind of used to it at this point. It's all good. Oh, <laughs> uh-huh. look, it's not stalking. It's, it's extreme shadowing. Okay. Oh. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, he is. He's a professional journalist. He, he really he, he is exactly. he's a journalist. He's been doing his journalistic duties. Exactly. Four point oh GPA. You know, softball player. Uh, you played one other sport too. What was it? Volleyball. Yeah, volleyball is actually like my favorite sport. Yeah, volleyball. Yeah, I, I swam. Yeah. A little known fact about me is I'm a, a amazing swimmer. Nice. I tried to play soccer, soccer when I was itty bitty, but uh, that that whole running thing ain't really my. Not into that. <laughs> not into that at all. And I and I and I don't like orange slices either. And that's what all the parents brought for snacks. And I was like, nah. I'm out. <laughs> Screw these oranges. Yeah, I was like, yeah, well, bye. Well, Camilla, thank you for being the guest in the show. Uh, we're definitely. I know we're gonna see you. Um in November at AWE, and then, like I said, hopefully, well, I know I'm going to be at, at Russell Cage. You're going to be at Russell Cage. Um, if you've never been, it's a great experience. Like, everybody who's anybody is going to be there. It's going to be like 300. It's going to be just as many wrestlers as, are, as there are wrestling fans. Um, awesome. And it's one huge, like, three-day party full of wrestlers. It's great. Find me. If you really want to party, find me, because I'm probably going to have, like, my entire hotel for a full of alcohol. I'm just going to let that be nice <laughs> right now. Like, all I do for Russell Cage, when I'm not wrestling, I'm drinking. Like, I'm telling you right now, it's great. Uh, Go holidays. <laughs> anyway, thank you for being on the show. We appreciate it so much. We'll see you down the road, all right? All right. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Bye. 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 Kitchen killer. With Camilla. Kitchen killer. With Camilla. Neither one of us can hit that high note. Yeah. <laughs> uh, there <it> goes. <laughs> so, Mika, great interview with our guest tonight. Camilla, what'd you think about it? Uh, outside of the fact that you like straight up stalked her, but it's good stalking in this case. And she is, she is everything that you want your up and coming wrestler to be. She's smart. She's funny. She's willing to learn. She's putting herself out there. She is absolutely just adorable she's got that sweet southern thing going i mean and again she's gonna cook me chicken cordon bleu i think i'm in love i think i should stalk her too now oh jesus no she she really is a great talent I, like i'm so looking forward to seeing where she goes in this business uh it, it's great to see somebody who's a who's a very dedicated athlete and stuff but who doesn't take themselves too seriously outside of the football field or the wrestling ring or the softball pitch or wherever it may be at. Like, you know, when she's away from when she's not competing, she she can take herself uh she can she can, you know, make fun of herself and stuff. And and like I said, her you know, we're both fans of her YouTube show. Yes. Uh, it's hilarious. Super, super hilarious. So anyway, uh so what you got coming up this weekend, Mika? Well, uh, Camilla mentioned that PWX show in North Carolina. I have every intention of being there for unsanctioned. Uh, that is going to be quite the show. Not only do you have Camilla Kane taking on Lacey Lane for the first time, you have a unsanctioned match um, as the headliner. Uh, Corey Hollis and John Schuyler, those two former friends, tag team partners, have this bad blood to say the very very least and they're going to get to rip each other apart um so that's going to be interesting i was there for the the i guess almost demanding of this match when these two guys went crazy at one another so i'm looking forward to seeing that you also of course at a pwx show you're going to have i'm sure um a, a ton of names that we both know 
uh, Timmy Lou Redden will be there, White Mike, the Ugly Ducklings will be there. Coach Mikey is in a duck versus Tommy Thomas. I'm not quite sure what a duck Cito match is, but anything with Mikey and Tommy Thomas, I, I, you, you got my money. You got me. I want to see the craziness that's going to ensue because these two guys are both great managers and to have two managers go at it in a, some sort of match is, is always entertaining. So you're going to have your fun. You're going to have your wrestling and you're going to have your violence. So PWX is this Saturday, the 21st uh, in North Carolina. I, I believe their website I'm plugging in everything here. It's PWX Experience, <clears throat> uh, something that affect part of me. Uh, go go find tickets. See you there. Meet me there. Buy me a drink. I think it's non-alcoholic, but I'm good with that. Um, so I'm going to make a road trip up there and check out what's happening. And I think after that, this Sunday, I am got a free Sunday happening. So... I'm going to come back and maybe check out some more wrestling uh, on the on the YouTubes and what have you, and wait for my next huge show, which is that free show coming up with Sabu and Murder One, Atlanta, Atlanta Wrestling Entertainment is putting on a free show on a Monday night uh, in Atlanta. It is the alternative to WWE. There's no competition there. It's just to come out and see some really great wrestling for free in Atlanta. So I'm looking way forward to that as well. Well, let's see. This weekend, uh, let's see. For me, this weekend, uh, Saturday, I will be in uh, Camden, Wyoming, Delaware for 302 Wrestling Presents Anytime, Anywhere, making my debut in Delaware. I'm super excited about this. Um, it, I'm I'm just amazed. Like there's there's a lot of great wrestling up north and stuff, and you know my cost. I'm, I'm slowly shifting away, making my way to uh, the Big Apple as far as wrestling goes. Uh, Sunday, I think you should stick around North Carolina for Sunday because Sunday I'll be in Greensboro, North Carolina for Firestar Wrestling. Firestar Pro Wrestling. Uh, it's a benefit show for a wrestler's mom and stuff. She's in the hospital. She needs uh some surgery, so there, this is a benefit show for his mother. Uh, there's a lot of great young talent at Firestar Pro Wrestling. Uh, I think that you'll enjoy it. <coughs> um, the, a lot of the guys, a lot of wrestlers you've seen, you know, in North Carolina, in Georgia, um, will be there that night, you know what I'm saying, or that afternoon. So check that out also. Like I said, uh, Sunday I'll be in Greensboro, North Carolina, Firestar Pro Wrestling. It's a benefit show for a wrestler's mother who is in the hospital right now. Uh, come check out some good wrestling. Come help out a great cause. There it goes. Um, so that's the end of the show. Mika, uh, this is the time when we plug stuff and love our social media. Uh, what do you got for us this time? Anything new? Social media. Social media was again, you can follow me on Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, Facebook. Oh my gosh, I might even get a Tumblr. Mika Villas, M I K A V, like victory, I L L A S. Uh, I'm Interactive is all get out, y'all. You know, we just talk wrestling. You'll see some, again, wrestling highlights from my trips, some pictures that I'll post from just all over where I've been. I'll throw some old stuff up there, too, because I've been to tons of shows, both uh, WWE, TNA, ROH, and, of course, lots of stuff all over in the indies. So, so just, you know, follow me, tag me, hit me back, and we'll talk wrestling. No unsolicited, but we'll talk wrestling. Yeah, as usual for me, William Huckabee on Facebook, uh, William Huckabee on Instagram, W A Huckabee on Twitter. Uh, follow the follow the podcast, follow us in Nerdcast as, uh, at you know Facebook at Wrestling Nerdcast and on Twitter at W Nerd Pod. Um, you can also check both of us out on our, on different podcasts that we do. You do F O W Wrestling or F O W, correct? It's FOW Radio. I am on with uh, my co-host Danny Danger and Patrick Alvarez. We do that tomorrow night, and we'll put it up on Podbean, Switcher, and a whole lot of other platforms. Yeah, and then Thursday I'll be uh, 
Once again, the guest on Thursday Night AMT with Stevie J, uh, the great Sudoku, and Abby A, uh, my favorite, my second favorite redhead of all time behind Weaver McIntyre because Weaver McIntyre's life. <laughs> wow. Anyway, hey, I love her voice. Oh, Jesus. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, thank you once again for tuning into the show. I'd like to say thank you to our guest tonight, the kitchen killer herself. Uh, kitchen Camilla killer. Kane. With Camilla, uh, on behalf of our guest producer, Stevie J, on behalf of our producer, Killer Kev, once again, he's on the man, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, if you have Killer Kev on Twitter or Facebook or whatever, you know, send him a get well, shoot him a message, let him know you're thinking about him, tell him that you've been hearing his voice in the podcast. Uh, on behalf of my co host, the lover of waffles, the voice of the speech impediments, um, one half of the world to the commentary team, Mika Villas. I am the IWA North Carolina heavyweight champion, the worldwide grand Prix champion, the Southern gentleman, the disrespectful intellectual, the incredible Huck, Will Huckabee. And this time we're going to go out on a little different note. Although I'm going to say support in the wrestling, I think we should end it off with singing Camilla's song. What do you think? Let's do it. Ready? I'm ready. All right. Come on. We're Camilla, Camilla. 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 Camilla